Thursday night's edition of the Flourishing as a Total Woman Summit virtual workshop series. My name is Sharika Hines, and I am the founder and host of the Total Woman Summit, and I am so happy to be with you tonight. We have been having an amazing time during this 11 days, 26 speakers, and 22 sessions. We have been so fortunate to have some dynamic powerhouses speak to us during this time, and you are certainly in for a treat tonight. For those of you that are new to the Total Woman Summit experience, the Total Woman Summit was created to empower women through education, connection, and community. And in keeping with our commitment to that, we are bringing you the experts that are discussing the topics that you want to discuss during this series in the midst of the COVID-19, aka Life Interrupted. So tonight we have with us a very special guest, Leticia Plummer, who is the CEO of Plummer Financial. We're going to be talking about money talk, no check, paycheck to paycheck, stimulus check, investments, and losses. So without further ado, let me introduce to you our host, our, our guest speaker for tonight, Leticia Plummer. Hi, Leticia, how are you? Hello, hello, how are you doing? I'm so glad and I'm so excited to be with you on tonight. It is going to be a wonderful time. Yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is going to be a wonderful time. I can't tell you how grateful I am that when I sent the invitation that you said yes, I know that you are incredibly busy because you are so super talented and in high demand. And so it is a gift for us to have you with us on tonight. So thank, thank you again. Thank yes, you. Ma yes, ma'am. So I am going to ask that our um, audience do us a favor and tell us if they can hear and see us both okay. Right. They'll drop us a note in the chat. Testing and one, two, three. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. All right. So thank you so much, Mona. I appreciate it. And other ladies for letting us know that you can hear us. So I just want to tell you guys a little bit before uh, Leticia tells us a little bit about herself. Let me give you the rules of engagement for tonight. Number one through 20, we are going to have fun. 20 through 25, well, 21 through uh, 25, we are going to engage with one another. And then 26 through 100, we're going to have fun again, and we're going to leave here with a wealth <laughs> of information. So what I want you guys to do is you can go ahead and start dropping your questions in the Q&A. You can ask your questions throughout the duration of this conversation, because again, it's a dialogue. So go ahead. You don't have to wait until the end. And I, my dear friend, Shamel, is going to be capturing all the notes in the chat session for us so we don't miss anything. She's already put in there the title and uh, Letitia's information, which we will revisit again. And you do want to stay on until the end of the call because we do have some really uh, great resources for you. And so we want to make sure that you get those and we have some special announcements. So Letitia, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're passionate about money? All right. Well, I, for one, have been in the financial services industry for 15 years plus now and counting, and I have uh, been, I guess, gifted with that, and it, it got passed down from my dad, who happens to be my boss, uh, president of Plumber Financial Services. So being around money and working for an investment firm has been instrumental in just sharing information, sharing information about money and wealth and how to accumulate wealth, how to leave your financial legacy. So, you know, being passionate about money, money is important, especially to our community. Uh, it, it gives us the power to do what we need to do and what we want to do and live the abundant life. So just sharing information uh, when it concerns finances, it's also important, and I'm just so excited to share some wonderful tips with everyone tonight. Awesome, and we're excited to hear them. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's get into it, uh, Leticia. So we're in the midst of COVID-19, which has wreaked havoc across the planet, uh, not yes. just in the single United States. We are in the midst of a global pandemic, and many are very concerned about what we're seeing right now economically um, yes. in the market. Can you tell us what is happening right now um, to our economy and what we're seeing? Well, there's many things that are happening to our economy. I think we all know just by watching the news and being on Facebook and our different social media outlets, 
uh, we can see that the economy is not only being affected as a whole, but it is also affecting our personal households. And that goes with spending. So many of us have you know, been furloughed, laid off of jobs. We've lost money in the market in our 401ks, different investment accounts that we have. We are seeing uh, some serious market volatility, but there are still some positive things that we can be doing even in the midst of something like this. Many of us have never experienced a pandemic like this and we have to stay positive in our mindset and just believe that things will get better and take it one day at a time. Even with money, it is one day at a time. It could be small little things that we can do to make us last and make us get out of this. So we have to be patient and we have to have some faith just to believe that we'll be okay. And I'm gonna be sharing some really, really good tips, but as far as the economy goes, we've got to uh, basically look at our personal, look at our personal households. And we can't worry too much about everything else that's going on with our neighbor or what's happening in New York or California. We gotta focus on our personal households. What is the amount of money that's coming in your household? How have you been affected? Um, are you spending uh, more than what you should be? Are we out there splurging? Because we're in the house and we're all on Amazon. Yeah, raise your hand. I, I can't see y'all, but- Get out of my business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I got some Amazon warriors on, on uh, in the workshop tonight. And, you know, it, it's we can laugh about it. And this is the best time to say. It is such the best time to say it because we're not, we're not supposed to be doing anything. We're not supposed wow. to be. We really aren't. And I'm telling you, if we, even if we've been furloughed, there are so many ways, there's so many resources out there uh, where you can defer your payments. And I'm going to get into that. You know, sometimes we don't think about, you know, there might be another way. There may be mm -hmm. you know, a resource that you didn't think about. Um, so what we're going to talk about that and certain things that you can do right now to cut, cut your budget, create a budget, and figure out how we're gonna last these next few months. Yes. I love it. We're gonna be giving you information. Uh, we're gonna give you some facts, and then we're gonna give you some tips and some hope for the future. Uh, so just stay tuned, get your pen and paper ready, get your phone ready so you can take some screenshots, because uh, you definitely wanna make sure you walk away with the resources. So as I look at the economy right now, I'm thinking to myself, any of us, I think most of us that are on this call were alive um, when we were in our last recession, which is in 2008. So is it safe to say that this can be likened into what we experienced during that time um, economically? You know, we are not certain how okay. this is going to pan out. And I will say this, in 2008, we suffered a recession for a much longer period of time than what we are experiencing right now. We saw mm -hmm. the market uh, take a major hit about four weeks ago, a major hit. Many of our clients here at Plumber Financial uh, suffered some substantial losses, uh, but, 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 but it wasn't but a week and a half later, the market came back and it's rebound. Wow. It's a really mm -hmm. good time. If you don't know anything about investments, it's the perfect time for you to get a hold to a financial advisor, partner with a professional that can help you in a time like this. So 2008 versus 2020, mm, no, it took no us comparison. quite a few years. No question. There, we, we haven't met that. It's scary right now because mm -hmm. we're thinking about our health, um, but money-wise, I am optimistic that it will not be that bad, but we cannot dispute unemployment. How many people have been laid off? How yeah. many people are affected in their household with paying rent, paying mortgage, mortgages, paying your auto premiums, all of the stuff that we have that are necessities, you know, we've been affected by that, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to look for the resources. It is not a, uh, it's not a, it's not a detriment 
you have to look towards what is out there to help you. There are so many avenues that we can go down and get us some help, get us some relief. And uh, we're going to talk about that. You know, it's, it's so important just to say, hey, you know, what about lowering your auto premium? No one probably has thought about that. A lot of us aren't driving as much. This is the right. best time for you to call in all states, uh, State Farm. They are promising customers that they are going to refund your premiums. So it's nothing for you to call tomorrow and see if you can get, you know, two months worth of your premium back. Just little mm -hmm. things like that just to survive. We are kicking into a financial survival mode. But I love we it. are really optimistic. In the financial services industry, we are optimistic that this won't be long. We have to mm -hmm. be smart. You know, when we mm -hmm. say, you, you probably heard a lot of people, a lot of uh, professionals say, uh, make sure you have six months worth of savings. This is the time. You know, we got tested, I mean, to the utmost. And... Mm -hmm we don't want to be in a situation like this again. We got to learn from this. We yes. got to learn from this. So let's talk about first the no check. So we said no check, paycheck to paycheck. So let's start with the no check. And Leticia makes a very valid point. There are a lot of resources available to you. So I want to make sure that we run those down to you. So number one, if you are in a situation where you have been furloughed or where you have been, well, let's say severed, um, now let's go to no check. So if you're in no check first, you currently do not have any income, what you want to do is not immediately resort to going into your savings or thinking about tapping into your investments. What you want to do is leverage the unemployment, plus they're giving you, as a result of the CARES Act, an additional $600 a week, and unemployment varies depending on where, where you live and your, and your state. So in Tennessee, for example, the maximum amount of unemployment is $275. That's the maximum amount. That doesn't mean that you will qualify for that. That is determined by your earnings while you were actually um, in the industry you were in and you were working. So it could go as high as $275. However, in Massachusetts, at one point, it was $700 a week because yeah. it's determined by the cost of living. But in addition to that, you get an additional $600 because we have people on the call from all over the country. So we want to make sure that we don't generalize just to Tennessee where we are right now. So first, you want to get your unemployment. Even if you have been rejected, you want to keep reapplying because um, they are making concessions and um, – they're making concessions and exceptions, rather, where they wouldn't have made those before, particularly for those of you that were uh, self-employed or contractors. Now you will be eligible for unemployment. So don't wait. If you need to apply for uh, food stamps, you want to make sure that you do that, too. The goal is to hold as much, on, hold on to as many of your assets as possible, right, yes. Leticia? Hold yes. on to your cash. So you want to do everything you if you are in the county um, or whatever city you're in, you want to check uh, with your city resources to see what they're offering in Shelby County in Tennessee. In Memphis, it would be um, the, what is it, the Shelby County, what is the DCS, or is that what it's called, DCS, um, Division of Community Services. In your state, you want to talk to in your city, the Division of Community Services, because they have a lot of resources that can help with food in addition to in food stamps and all of that. Because right now we're addressing no checks. So if you don't have any checks, before you start going into your savings to bridge the gap, you first want to leverage all the resources that are available to you. Yes. Um, if you haven't gotten your stimulus checks, you should be on the lookout for those. Uh, buying anything that would exclude you in that small group of people that won't be eligible for that. Now let's get to the paycheck to paycheck. If you are someone who is in a situation or a scenario um, that has recently been furloughed or recently been severed, and you are now receiving resources, but it's on a limited time basis, or you just have mismanaged money in the past, this is no time to beat yourself up. It is an opportunity for you to course correct. Yes. So what would you say to those people who are paycheck to paycheck, Letitia? Paycheck to paycheck, you know, some there are many of us uh, at times where we have experienced that. I have experienced that before in my life. And it really, uh, it, it makes you, 
get yourself in a position to look at where you are. You must know where you are today in order to secure tomorrow. So what the first thing I would say we need to do is look at all of your assets, look at every dime that you have, determine what your net worth is. You've got to know what is coming in, what you're spending, and what you're saving. And then you're gonna have to find some way to eliminate some of this spending, eliminate an expense that you don't necessarily need. What about those subscriptions that many of us have? You know, uh, Riley, my daughter, had, I found like six subscriptions for, I just don't even know what. <laughs> and I've got $50, $60 coming out my checking account. I'm saying, what in the world does this girl have on my phone? So look through your subscriptions that you, you don't even realize that you have. And those things add up. $5.99 a month mm -hmm. here, $6.99 a month here. You could be easily be saving $60 to $75 a month just off of subscriptions. So doing that, mm -hmm. that's a small uh you know, little tip that you could, you could do. And as far as eliminating uh, your expenses, you've got to find things that are just your necessities. You've got to keep that. But if it's unnecessary and you do not have to spend, spend at least just what you need and start cooking well, at home, right? How many of well, us are cooking at home? <laughs> I am I'm cooking at home, at but home. I'm eating... On the weekend, though, I'm trying to go out and treat myself a little bit uh, at some of my favorite restaurants. Just on the weekend, though. Uh, paycheck to paycheck. We got no, to I'm survive. Like paycheck to paycheck. She's managing me because I need this during this call. That's right. We're on the paycheck to paycheck. She's keeping me honest uh, on each of these topics. Well, you bring up a very, very valid point. You say that people really need to understand whether or not you're paycheck to paycheck or no check. You need to understand what's coming out of your account. We talked earlier today, and I'm glad that you were revisiting this too, knowing what's coming out of your account. One of the things that I'm notorious about doing every quarter is going to my bank, having them print off for me all of my bank statements for that quarter. I That's have them print them off because I want to sit with them with a highlighter and a pen, a red ink pen, and I need to go through to see if there are any hidden charges, to see if there have been any errors. And, and realistically, you probably should be doing this more routinely than that, but right. that's that's just my habit of sort of where I am with it. But that's also because I have a CPA in full transparency. So she's really monitoring that for me. But for my own um, sanity, I'm doing that quarterly, going through, looking to see yes. where I'm paying money. And then I'm categorizing it to see if I've been double charged. You'll be surprised at how yeah. many times I've missed some charges that I didn't even realize that happened. Somebody has uh, gone up on a subscription that I, I didn't know or I missed an email about. So mm -hmm. that's something that you need to do. And that's how I found out, too, that I was no longer on a special with Comcast and that that had, been, that had gone up like $80. So for four months, I paid an additional $80 a month, $320 that I didn't even know because I wasn't paying attention. So I had to separate what was necessity Yes. What's necessity versus what's like versus what's wants. And those likes and wants are creature comforts. And we're talking survival, right, Letitia? We're talking long-term yes. survival, survival here. Yes. So, yeah, and what else would you recommend? What, when you talk about a budget, though, can you give mm -hmm. us some percentages of what people, what percentage of your income should you be living out of? What percentage should you be saving? And then what percentage should you be investing ideally? Well, you know, every person's financial position is different. You know, depending on how much you have coming into your household and depending on how much your total expenses are on a monthly basis, it is, it's kind of hard to determine how, what percentage actually that you're, you should be putting to the side. Um, what I always say is, uh, I'm, I am a firm, firm believer in tithing. Uh, first, I do tithe to my home church. And, <laughs> and, and guess what? I tithe to myself. I pay myself. Ooh, what so, does that mean? Tell me what's about that. Okay, so I'm tithing to God first. That's number one. Number two is I'm going to take 10% of my income 
And I'm going to put that away, either in savings, or I'm gonna put it in my mutual fund, or if I decide to flip it over to my IRA, I have to do that. Just like, like air, I have to tie, I have to pay myself. You know why I have to pay myself? Because I need to be prepared for something like this. What we don't want to do is end up in a situation or a pandemic where we don't have our own money to depend on. We have to pay ourselves because we got to be prepared for the unknown. This was mm. the unknown. This really took the, this, this took us all off of the meter. We, we are, we're in a, a real strange place right now. And yeah. you know, it's all about preparation. You cannot mm -hmm. achieve any type of wealth. You cannot accumulate any type of wealth unless you are prepared. And a budget causes you to prepare yourself for emergencies, for the unknown, for financial emergencies, not even just the pandemic. What if you know someone is experiencing, you know, having to have a, a new roof put on their house? And the deductible for that. So not only are you losing wages, but you're gonna to have to come up out of money to pay for a, a uh, deductible. And we've gotta prepare. We've got to prepare. We don't wanna experience what we experienced during this time again. If we don't learn yeah. any other lesson, we must learn to take care of ourselves, take care of our households. And that means being disciplined in our mind. We gotta make up in our mind that we have to put this money aside. It's like, it's just like paying a bill. If I pay myself, I'm a bill. Because when you pay I'm MLGW, a bill. I'm right? A bill. Pay your bill. <laughs> I'm a bill. I <laughs> you are a bill. Because when you pay, when you pay your Comcast bill or you pay your utility bill, you don't get that money back. You can't see it anymore. It's paid for. Mm -hmm. That is how we have to get. We got to get a mindset like that when it comes to savings. See, we are you know made what? to play, pay that, right? We got to yes. pay, ourselves, pay ourselves. We have to make ourselves pay ourselves because guess what? I think it was L'Oreal that said you were worth it. And so yes. one of the things that I like that you talked about and something um, Megan this morning, who was our expert or this afternoon rather, is you said that we have got to be prepared and we have got to put the money aside. I think she called it a freedom fund. And I mm. really love the fact that she called it a freedom fund because it gives you, you walk different, you have a different yeah. level of discomfort, you're not yes. panicking in the middle of a pandemic, because this conversation even applies, quite frankly, to those of, of, of you and those of us who are not in the middle of a crisis financially or panicking, right? And it's thereby just for the grace of God and good planning. Um, that that's a, that that's your reality. That's my reality. Right. But let's be honest, right? Even during this time, there are some adjustments that we okay. have to make, right? Because even if we were saving this amount, can you speak to that about even if right now things aren't tight, things are different. What you said earlier about, and Megan says this too, was six months. If you can save six months, now is the time based off what we're seeing. She said a typical recession lasts about 11 months and a typical yes. depression, 18 months. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. So you, yep, so you need to save. If you can save six months, now is the time for you to start thinking about mm -hmm. extending that to nine months should be your next goal. And then 12 months should be your next goal on savings. And savings is different from investments, right? And we'll Absolutely. get to investments later. But that's different, correct? It is okay. correct. And, correct. Okay, good. So savings different from investments. But then can you also talk about in our budget, like where's the play money? What what am I putting <laughs> the play money in the budget? And how do I come up with the right figure that's right for for playing and being able to just have fun a little bit? You know, I, I personally have uh, what I call a diva fund. And <laughs> the diva fund. First of all, I'm a bill. I'm worth it, and I get a diva fund. I love yes. It. Okay. <laughs> you know, we've got we've got our savings. You know, that's what we have to do. And if we have some extra, you know, after we have paid ourselves, yes, mm -hmm. we can say we can put ourselves on a budget to get our hair done, to get our nails done, and if we want that purse or what have you, 
you are going to have to uh, choose a time, a time frame of when it is like, okay, I'm a splurge here. You can't be a weekly splurger. We can't, we can't do those things. So we got to have- You can't splurge every week. You can't splurge every day. No, you can't have a splurge lifestyle. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, have, we have somewhere to go. We have somewhere to Let go. Let me ask a question real quick, uh, Leticia. How many of you, by raise of hands, are currently living a splurge lifestyle? Don't be shy because we can't see you anyway. Yeah, we, right. we got a couple of hands. We got, we got, oh Lord, we got a couple of hands. That's all right. We're going to get free together. We're going to get free together. Yes, yes. So, we got to free uh, ourselves. So tell us what, what, what that should look like when you're starting that out. You started to say that um, we, we can't have it weekly. We can't have it daily. So what does it look like um, percentage-wise a dollar amount? You know, you can actually do another 10% if you have the expendable income to do it. If you can't afford to do that, then you can pay yourself another 10%. So you've got your 10% for your savings. You can give yourself 10% for splurging if you have that flexibility. Now, if you don't, if it's a paycheck to paycheck situation, that's okay. Um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in when you get those lump sum checks, from anything, even from taxes, you know, we got to start doing the right thing with our income tax returns, ladies. Um, we've got to stop what buying that? What are you saying, too much. Are you saying this is not the time to go get you a new Louis Vuitton? This is not no. time for you to go get to upgrade your your ride. No, no, ma'am. You if should not be getting... spending your stimulus checks on the shoes that you've been and saying the Lord blessed you with it. Is that what you're saying, Leticia? I am not saying that. <laughs> Please, nobody is going to see that Louis Vuitton bag. Who's going to see it? You're going to have a mask on, so they're not going to see that it's you with the bag. So I don't have $1,200 to put in it, though. You know what? That, hey, if you are carrying around, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sisters, we can't carry around a bag and not be able to put that amount inside of the bag of what we pay for it for. We got, we got to, we got to stop that. It's cute, but guess what's not cute? Getting furloughed and not having money to support your family. That is important. Ooh. That is very, very, very important. And we've got to start making some good decisions because as women, as we get older, we are empowered now. We are strong on the workforce. We are leaders. We are, uh, you know, just people of wisdom. We have it. We Mom, have the tools. We're not waiting to be rescued. We are not damsels no. in distress. Even if you no. are booed up or if you're married, you should not be a damsel in distress. Yes. So let me ask you this question because we've had a very rich conversation about this this morning and I shared in full transparency, the reason that I want to get this information to you is because I wasn't always financially savvy. And one of the things that one of my good friends, Kiva, uh, said to me is she was an SB, SBP in banking as well. And she talked to me about, she was like, Sharika, I am really concerned about the women who make seventy and eighty and ninety thousand dollars a year, and they don't have any savings, and they are just really sharp. They have really yes. nice clothes. They have all the newest everything, but they don't have five thousand dollars in the bank. She said it's those people that I'm concerned about, not just the ones that don't have it to save. She was like, so they have resources and they have poor money management skills, and they don't have information. And then yes. you have people who don't have the resources, but they have information. So the goal is to have the resources and to have the yes. information and the discipline. So here's something I want to share with you about my personal life, right? So I remember almost now about mm, maybe when was 2006 at this point, 14 years ago. So about 14 years ago, I was dating this gentleman, bad guy, but he taught me a lot about money, right? We should not have been dating. But one of the things that he said to me was, this is a true story, real life. He said to me, um, he was helping me with money. He was uh, very well off. And he said to me, so you're swiping stuff. He was like, you're charging uh, blouses. You're charging handbags. You're charging shoes. You look good. You're super cute. He was like, wait, help me better understand why you financing a shirt. 
and why you finance the shoes. Yes. Because essentially that's what you're doing when you use your credit cards to pay for things. And then on top of that, something that Megan pointed out this morning, and you're wearing a shirt that don't even belong to you. Because you find it. It's somebody else's. I was like, wait, yeah. I don't even follow the clothes. What are you saying? So that really put things in proper perspective for yes. me. Um, and I was resistant at first, just ignorant and foolish and really concerned about being super superficial. Um, but then I got really in the know. And I was like, that sounds ignorant. So now I use my credit card. For I, if I pay for something with a credit card, it's not to finance it. It's to get the points for the rewards. And then I pay it off before the bill is due. So yeah. I just wanted to give you guys that good tip right there. That's so great tip. When you're getting, yeah, when you're getting these these um, financial refunds, these bonuses or these stimulus yeah. checks or these um, income tax checks, what should you be doing with them, Leticia? What what can you give us sort of a mix of how people should they be paying off debt? Should they be investing? Should they be putting it into savings? What should they be doing? I really do believe if even with the stimulus check, we can talk about that, the stimulus check. You got that $1,200 check. I know many of you, um, I shouldn't say that. I don't know how many of you uh, actually spent all of it already. And, and we had some people that didn't qualify for it. Yeah, yes, that didn't, there were many yeah. people that didn't qualify for it. You know, I would suggest that you take at least half of it half of it, put it away. If you're not spending that on, you know, bills right now, and even that, most of your bills can be deferred right now with you just make picking up the phone and making a phone call. That's it. So you should try to say that. It's a stimulus check. Even though stimulus means really to spend, that is to help, you know, get a jump start in the economy. They wanted us to kind of spend that money. Well, we didn't need to spend it. It's a for the economy. It's a yeah. laxative for the economy. That's exactly yes, it what is. it is. But we mm -hmm. got to say, because we don't mm -hmm. know what is to come in the next 30 days. We don't know how this virus is going to be contained or is there going to be an outbreak. So because we don't know, any excess that we get right now, put it away. If you have a mutual fund, put it in there. If you have a savings account, put it in there and ask your professional expert, ask your professional expert, depending on what portfolio you have, don't make that choice. Please don't get online and talking about you wanna buy 100 shares of Walmart. No, ma'am, you don't wanna buy 100 shares of Walmart. You don't wanna do any of that until you get expert advice from a financial planner or a financial advisor, because it all depends on your risk tolerance. Some of us are, we say we want to invest, but we don't know what our risk tolerance is. So that's We don't important. even know our net worth. We don't know our yeah. net worth. So, yes. so you can't start investing just because you have money. You need right. to understand what your net worth is. So, Absolutely. and you can have money in the bank, but if you have money in the bank and your debt to income ratio is super high, you need to pay down your debt. Then that's Absolutely. something that your financial a professional, financial professional can help you evaluate. Let's ask, this is a perfect time for a question. So what type of education should a financial planner have? CFP, CHFC, CFA? I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what, I know certified financial planner. What's the mm -hmm. CHFC and what's the CFF, CFA? There are multiple, those are basically called financial designations. And there are an array of financial advisors and financial planners that have different certifications and different designations. Um, you have many advisors in today's time that have gone the extra mile to get a CFP, a certified uh, financial planner designation. And actually here at Plumber Financial Services, uh, LV Plumber Jr. actually is a CFP. But we also have Lawrence Plummer Sr., who is a financial advisor, but he has L-U-T-C-F behind his oh name. Oh, my God. What am I with that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, you have all the designations. What you want to do when you are choosing a financial advisor, definitely go by referrals. You know, if you know someone that has a trusted advisor that has helped them grow uh, their money has helped them secure life insurance, has helped them uh, save for retirement, has helped them save for college funding. 
you know, it, it really is all about referrals and it's about that advisor's reputation. So we always want to make sure that, you know, don't get hung up so much on the designations because I know a few CFPs that maybe are eh, not so much, you know, so yeah. we want to make sure that we get with someone that has integrity. Ask your friends, who, does, who manages your money? Um, ask a trusted person. And of course, you know, I want you to call me here at Plumber Financial. We have been in business for over 35 years. And we have trusted people here that have the integrity, that have the expertise, that have the history of changing lives and helping people accumulate wealth and securing a financial legacy. So make sure you do not get hung up in that. Um, but you want to make sure that you choose an advisor and choose a firm that has the reputation and has the resources that you need uh, to reach your financial goals. And you know what? I want to go ahead and debunk a myth. You do not have to have money today or be wealthy no. to see a financial no. advisor or a financial planner, right? They that can help so you. Right. They can help you be able to begin, right? You, that's not a requirement. Is it a requirement for your firm that people be high net worth? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This firm was built just from my dad. My dad is self-made. He, I, I, he would kill me for telling a little bit of his story, and I'm not going to steal his glory, but my father at 19 years old was, you know, working at my grandmother's corner store, riding a bike to work. And today he is a multimillionaire. And based off of just having the belief that he could get more, he wanted more for his family. He wanted to leave a financial legacy. And it was built from a person just like that, an everyday person. And you can come in with $50. If you just want to start, you know, a mutual fund account, you can open your mutual fund account with as less as $50 a month. And $50 a month goes a long way. Because in a year, how much is that? $600. And $600, $600. that could be, that's, that's half of the stimulus check that you could have had from the previous Already. year. Already. And what I will tell you is the moment that you start investing your resources and the moment that you start to see your financial position get a little bit clearer, you get a little bit more clarity, you get a little bit more freedom, you stand up straighter. Or yeah. if you have the resources, you start really diversifying and you start putting your resources there, watching your money grow, or just getting the professional help that you can't get from yes. an app. If you are doing that and you're managing your own investments, a financial planner or a financial advisor can help you do that uh, and grow your money in ways that you couldn't even begin to imagine. So let's ask, let's answer a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the money to pay your bills while you're not working, should you continue to pay those bills or defer them? Now, I have an opinion on that. I'll tell you my opinion, and then I'll defer to the expert. My opinion on that is it depends on what those bills are. Because what I would say is you want to pay your necessities, and then you want to call everyone else. People are incredibly flexible right now in light of this pandemic. I would start calling people saying, hey, I just got laid off. I don't have the resources for this. And then I'm not able to pay. So in some cases, they will postpone the debt or put the debt on pause for a period of time. So you're not still accruing interest. You're not being charged penalties or late right. fees. And they're not reporting that to the credit bureau, um, negatively reflecting that against your credit. Secondly, they may have some alternative arrangements where you can pay pennies on the dollar so you can continue to stay active. But I would not encourage you, if you don't know when you're going to start to have a steady stream of reliable income to come back in, that you start using the money that you do have to pay bills that are not essential. But that's my opinion, a non-expert opinion. I will now defer to the professional. <laughs> you look, Ms. Himes, you hit it dead on. I would tell my students right now, because I would be in class if this pandemic wouldn't be happening, I'd be inside in the middle of my principle of economics course and I'd be telling them, look guys, don't do it. If you still have your recurring income coming in, please don't do that. Please don't wait for the uh, pandemic to go away. And then you decided you weren't gonna pay a few bills for three months, 90 days, and then you gotta come up with lump sum money. 
that totally defeats our whole purpose of saving and paying ourselves. I mean, that that's not a smart thing to do. And we have to be responsible. We got to think about it like we're not going through this. Let's not get too hung up. I know we're inside, tucked away. Can't go nowhere. Can't party. We can't go to the club. I can't wear what I want to wear. This mask getting on my nerves. But, you know, we still have to be disciplined. We still got to do the right thing because we got to mm-hmm. survive. That's, that's what we're in. We're in survival mode in the worst way. We're, our minds, we got to keep our minds, you know, from worrying and the anxiety of what's to happen and how you do that. Take a second. Why don't you also take a peek at that credit? This is a wonderful time to clean up your credit as well. And if you inbox me and we'll get, get all the uh, contact information towards the end, I have some wonderful resources for cleaning up your credit. If you need the help for that, there's some things, there's some tips I have that are totally awesome. But you gotta send me a message if you want it. And these are things that you don't have to pay anybody to do, that you can do tonight. So if you need that's information why you gotta, that, you ask you me. Stay tuned in. That's why you got to stay tuned in. Yes. So she answered that question. Uh, hopefully we satisfy that for you. And then this other question, I think what we just discussed applies to that. Is this a good time to pay student loans if you are still being paid? Well, if you're still receiving return income and you can still afford to pay the student loans, absolutely. It may be a good time for you to renegotiate payments of those loans. Um, so I would say use that opportunity to do that if you can. Um, Let's see, would it be good to pay off your card or credit card? Again, I think Mm -hmm. that falls in the same category. This is not the time to be spending um, a lump sum of money. Right now, we we certainly discourage that. This is not the time for that. Um, You need to make sure that you're renegotiating those terms. This is a perfect opportunity for you to renegotiate those terms. In fact, if you can get a lower interest rate on your car right now, then when you get ready to pay it off, you'll be paying a lower amount. So that's something to strongly consider um, as well. Okay, now here's another question. What do you mean by risk tolerance? Very good question. Risk tolerance, basically what that means is that's a measure of your sensitivity to investing. Some of us are uh, conservative and we don't want to lose. We want, we want to play a little bit. We want to tippy toe a little bit in the market. You're conservative. And that means that you uh, have a high sensitivity of losing money. Now we have our moderate people. Moderate say, yeah, I'm going to play a little. I'm not going to gamble all. I, I, I can stand to lose a little bit, you know, I'm all right. I ain't going to freak out if we go through what we just went through. And then we have aggressive. Aggressive says, I'm all in. Take it. I'm going to ride the wave of the market. We're good to go. Um, let's go. Put it all in. I got time to go up and down with the market volatility. I'm fine. So your risk tolerance basically measures your level of sensitivity to losing and winning when it comes to the market. Yeah, and that's actually one of the the, um, six principles of money is that, um, right, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So um, definitely, and the lower the risk, the lower the reward, and the reward is the return on your initial investment. So uh, you see, I know a little bit about that. Yes, go ahead, We, we switch your seats. Yes. No, listen, I am just an accessory complimenting her outfit. That's all I'm doing. That is it. <laughs> so now we have another question. I have a low risk tolerance. You mentioned the market taking a turn for the worse a few weeks ago. I panicked and moved my money into a stable value option. How will I know when it's a good time to move out of the stable value option and diversify the funds in my 401k? And how do you feel about the target take funds? That's a loaded question. (laughs) That is a very loaded question. And viewer, my sister, I would definitely want to talk to you one-on-one. I would want to pair you with one of our advisors because you need expert advice. That is definitely not a blanket question. It depends on what you were in before, what, which stable fund you're invested in. uh, What, what does it entail? What does the rest of your 401k look like? What does the rest of your whole portfolio look like? Um, So I would want you to call me 
and let me set you up with an advisor here. It's at no cost to you for a, one of our advisors to say, hey, let me look at this for you and I can give you the advice uh, to make the right move. That is very scary because, you know, of course, advisors, they're not, they're not, you know, they can't predict what can happen, you know, and they can only go based on your personal financial goal. What is your long-term goal? And with you making that move to a different fund, that means you have a short-term goal and you're going to have to be very strategic on when you move that money back out and what you invest it in. So I would strongly suggest you contact me, let me schedule a time for an expert to give you the answer uh, to what you need for you. Yeah, and that's so good. And just to remind you all, um, for financial analysis, it's very much like going to see your primary care physician Absolutely. or whatever specialist you go see. There are no one-size-fits-all answers. And just because you give us the symptoms doesn't mean that you have the same diagnosis as your neighbor with the same yeah. or similar symptoms. They need to look at your, your financial scenario, ask you some very personal, specific questions that are unique to you and what they're seeing with their expertise to be able to really advise you in the appropriate way. So I wanted to make sure we said that. So yeah. here's another question. I've heard that annuities provide big commissions and, push, and are pushed by financial planners. What are your thoughts on that and annuities? Well, you know, many, many products are, of course, pushed for, uh, you know, the safety, really, of the client. Annuities provide income for life. That is what an annuity means. It means income for life or your lifetime. And many times when it comes to uh, the product itself, it depends on the carrier. You know, it depends on what carrier uh, suits you. It is not based off of, you know, oh, my commissions are going to be this much. If I sell this much, that's with anything. If you owned a clothing store, you know, you, you've got to sell in order for you to have a livelihood here. So annuities can be very strategic for a particular type of client. It depends on your goals. It depends on you know, what your future retirement goals look like. We, we offer many uh, annuities that, you know, help you to really prepare for income later. And most of the time, you have to have a good snapshot. Our advisors look at where you are right now. They look at what you have to invest. And they look at what is your long-term goal. So there's no bad product out there. There really isn't. It just all depends on what fits you. And an annuity may not fit you. It may not. Um, but again, I would even encourage that viewer to please give us a call and let us know what your goals are. And our experts here at Plumber Financial will give you the best advice, not based off of commission, the best advice that fits where you're going financially. So I would encourage mm -hmm. you, yes, please give us a call and let us get you the right product that fits where what you're trying to do, what you're trying to help so solidify your wealth, solidify your future income, all of that good stuff. So call me on that one. That's good. And you know what? So I want to make sure that we have this conversation. We talked, well, I saw um, in the CARES Act, there's a provision that you can now take money out of your 401k um, without penalty for three years. And I am so concerned about that. And I know when we talked in preparation for this call, it was one of the things that both you and Megan, our guests from earlier, were very concerned about. So talk to us about that and the risk and your concerns about that. You know, I, I would tell my students right now, you know, if you do not need to do that, that is a last, that's a very drastic measure. You know, if you are taking money out of your 401k, what is 401k for? It is for our future retirement income. That is what it's for. So if you do not need to do that, don't do it. You shouldn't do it. Ask your professionals about it because here's the thing, you are not exempt from income tax on that. 
So if you decide that you are going to pull out $10,000, you know, out of your 401k and you're under 59 and a half, you know, you've got some serious penalties that are going to happen. I mean, you've got to pay your taxes on the money. Everybody remember this, your 401k money, any of your employer sponsored plans, they have never been taxed. So depending on how much you are taking out, you know, you could put yourself in a whole nother tax bracket. And that's not something right now that you need. And I would definitely encourage you, call me on that question. If anyone is considering making that choice, call us. We could maybe find another solution for you. You know, something that is yeah. better suited so you do not make a mistake like that because it could be a long lasting one that you have to continue to pay for. Absolutely. And one thing that um, to complement what Letitia just said that you want to consider that Megan brought up earlier today was that if you are not in a good financial position and you don't have discipline today to manage resources, you certainly don't want to put yourself where in three years from now you are on the hook to pay back that large sum of money and you don't have it because the right. penalties are going to be great. Don't create a bill. Don't create a bill for yourself with your own money. Is Correct. the way to put it. Don't create a bill for yourself with your own money. So here's yeah. another question. Um, what are your suggestions for savings for retirement, not only for myself, but also for a child with special needs? And I think your answer to that wow. is going to be they should probably have a conversation with a financial planner. Is, Abs is that absolutely. You know, they, they, and these are some really great questions. And I thank you so much for putting that, putting that out there. We all want to be prepared for uh, retirement in the best way. Many times we have clients that come in that have worked for so long and they bring their rollover money to us. We set them up real good, but they've never been uh, accustomed to having a, a large lump sum of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars all at once. And many times we could see clients go through that money in uh, just a few years. I've witnessed it. And what we want to do now, because the information is readily available, the experts are here. Plumber Financial is here to help you, to help you understand investments, to help you understand retirement income, to help you understand how to save for a children's uh, time when they get ready to go to college. We got to think about that. Um, I think when my daughter becomes 18, it could potentially cost me, uh, what, 90, almost $100,000 for a general four-year college. Just a general one. Just a general. Nobody probably more. Right, right. So oh, my God. Just to think about that, I'm like, okay, you know, I got to really be saving. And, you, you know, for sure. <laughs> we got to save. Listen. And so we don't want our kids... What we don't want to do um, is our kids having a future of student loans. We're going oh, through that now. Do not be teaching them that. Do not teach your, your children how to have debt. Pass yeah. on a legacy of money management, of, mo of wealth. If you can create, be the first generation to create wealth and, and money management, that is what you should do. So I want to ask you these last four questions before we give them some uh, tips and resources for them to follow. So what about investing in Bitcoin currency or cryptocurrency? Oh, you got to call me. <laughs> <laughs> sister, you got to call. You, okay. Sister, you have, look, I can't, I can't tell you that on here. No, ma'am. You got to call. You got to call. You got to call right. me. <laughs> okay, here's another question. What would be some of the pertinent questions to ask the financial planner to ensure that they have your best interest at heart and that they would be a good fit? Okay, I think you definitely need to first be comfortable with that person. When you first meet a financial advisor, one of the things that you need to look for is an advisor that is a good listener. And that first meeting, um, it should never be selling a product to you. Be very wary of that. The only thing that we need to be doing is gathering data from you. In order for us to assess or give you the right 
expertise, the right advice as to line you up with your financial goals, we have to listen. We have to listen and we have to gather data and we have to understand and know where you are going. Is it that life insurance is what you need? We've got to determine what you need. We got to determine what kind of plan is it going to take to put together to get you to where you need to be. So, you know, look for that first initial, that first initial meeting. You have to feel comfortable. After all, you are trusting someone with your personal money and you have to have a good vibe. I go with, I'm a big gut person. If I, if it don't feel right, I'm sorry, I, I got to move on, I feel right. mm -hmm. you know, so you want to get with someone that has experience, someone who has the clients that are happy, someone that is going to pay you attention and well, someone's going to listen. Ask yes. for referrals so you can call. When I hired my CPA, when I hired my financial person, well, I worked in financial services in full transparency, so that may be why I'm a little bit more uh, familiar with some of this, this language. But, <laughs> but um, not as a provider, but I, I'm an HR um, yes. person. And so, um, but one of the things you want to make sure is that you ask for references. Ask for yes. references once you even get the referrals. Ask for references. They yeah. should be open to that. Um, and you should feel comfortable having the conversation wherever, whatever financial state you're in. Okay, Absolutely. here's a question. Is it best that my financial planner reside in the same state as me? Um, not necessarily. You know, I'm, I'm going to be plugging Plumber Financial all through this thing now. I want you to call me, mm -hmm. but we have clients in over 38 states and believe it or not even though we are located here in memphis tennessee the majority of our clients are abroad and you know it's not a sin for you to have an advisor in new york or in california we have believe it or not we have many clients that we have never met just because the integrity and the expertise and the reputation and the high level of service that we have provided over the years, it speaks of us, it speaks before us. Um, so having a, an advisor far away, no, that's, that's not a negative thing. As long as you trust that person, as long as you can get that person on the phone, as long as that, as long as that person is giving you the expert advice that you need to make sure you're going where you need to go, it's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, there is nothing wrong with that. And then too, we want we have someone who's asking, how would a hairstylist? What's the best way for them to invest for retirement? Again, I just want to say to you all that with that question, one of the things that you want to know is that's something that is one on one because not all hairstylists are in the same scenario financially. So it's going to be unique to your situation. So that's something that you're definitely going to want to make sure that you are asking, um, you want to set up some time with Summer Financial <laughs> yes. to ask those questions. You want yes. to set up some time with them to ask those questions. And you yes. will see that we just put some resource guides up on the screen for you. These are some good books for you to read, um, for you to stay in the know, and some folks yes. that you can follow in addition to Letitia Summer uh, on social media. To always stay in the know of what's happening with money. So her information is actually in our chat. And then you'll also see um, that we also have more information um, in our chat about how you can contact her as well. So Shamel will drop that again. So you probably want to screenshot this. Um, so you'll have it and it'll be easily available to you. And then these are also some other resources for you to know. We are going to tell you that it's not going to be easy and you are going to have to own this process. You cannot yes. be a passive bystander in managing your resources. That's not the way this works. So um, this has been such a great conversation. We are yes. so grateful for Leticia and all of this wealth of knowledge that she has shared with us. I would strongly encourage you to continue this conversation in a one-on-one -on -one format. Um, if any of these scenarios you find yourself in, if you have money to invest, if you would like to reimagine re or think deeply about the way that you're investing your money, have a conversation. There is no cost to you to have a consultation with them. There is no cost for you to do that. Uh, you do not need to be located in the same city and state. 
the same way that you are having this virtual experience, you can have the same virtual experience with her in a one-on-one -on -one environment or with yes. an advisor in her office. Um, so you don't have to physically show up. And really, quite frankly, none of us will be able to physically show up anyway. Um, right. It's a social distancing that we're doing, so there's no time like the present. So get to know your money. Get familiar with your situation so you can be in charge of that. And then last but not least, I would like to just, um, I need you guys to help with something. I sit on um, a committee called Women United for the United Way, and we are in the process of trying to make sure that we have, um, provide some COVID relief for those that are on the front line at the Salvation Army who are doing critical work in our community. So I need you, if you can, to text to give 20 for 20. That will get 20 masks to 20 uh, employees or 20 volunteers at the Salvation Army. If you can do more than $20, don't limit yourself to that. Please share. We need your help. They need these masks so we can protect those that are on the front line, helping those in our community stay safe. So we want to do that so they can make sure that they're safe for their families. But other than that, as soon as this is over, you're going to get a survey about tonight's session. Please make sure you fill out that survey. We want to hear from you. We want your feedback. This is so important to us. It has been a joy having you with us tonight. If you're not following at Total Woman Summit on Instagram or at Sharika Hines, shame on you. You should start following us now because we're going to have some good follow-up when this series is over about recaps and replays and playback. So you definitely want to do that. And if you're not signed up for the summit newsletter, the summit inner circle, you should do that on totalwomansummit.com. So thank you again for joining us tonight. It has been a pleasure. We'll see you back tomorrow at 12 noon. If you're not signed up for those sessions, you want to go out there and grab the last few seats. Letitia, thank you so much for being with us. Thank tonight. you. Have a thank you, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.